In this post, I'm going to cover uh, categories and tags. So uh, if you haven't watched the previous videos, then I would recommend going back to them unless you feel like you have those bases covered. Uh, we're in the midst of a post here, and uh, so on the right-hand side, you'll see categories. And if the category, first of all, I want to give you just an overview of these. Categories are broad stroke kind of buckets for information, or uh, you'd think of them as file folders of information. And because you have both categories and tags, I recommend that you keep the categories fairly low, like five to 10 categories. And then you can use almost an unlimited amount of keywords that fit into the tags. Uh, so the categories, you'd usually only select one category uh, for each post. Uh, the tags, you might have several uh, several posts that all have the same tag. Uh, so that's the, uh, or you might have, you would almost always have several tags per post. Basically, the tags you can think of as any little keywords or keyword phrases that, uh, that relate to that article. It's a, it's a shortcut for people to find other articles that are similar to the uh, the article they're reading. That's what it's for. It also, from a search engine standpoint, adds those keywords in a really legitimate way, adds those keywords into your uh, website and into links for the posts and all of that. So tags are a very uh, important piece of the puzzle. Now, if I open up, uh, Dominique's already given me the category is training fundamentals, which we haven't set up yet, I don't think. So we'll look here. So we don't have training fundamentals. That's not one of the um, categories. So we do add new category and training fundamentals. Now you could make it a subcategory. If you wanted to make a subcategory, you say training fundamentals is uh, what's its parent company and in our uh, category. It would be dog tricks or whatever, but it's a top-level category. Again, I don't recommend a ton of categories unless it really makes sense for your business model. Add new category, and you see it put it up here and put a checkbox in it. Uh, I should note, too, that if you publish without selecting a category, it'll be checked and uncategorized. So if uncategorized is checked, then you just uncheck it. And check the correct category. Now we'll add the tags and all you do normally uh, this is something you might do right as you're posting just you know what the article is about and you and you just create a list of keyword phrases that relate to uh, this post. I have a list for this one so I copy it but as you can see this is a list of phrases uh, conditioning, clicker training, marker training, dog training, etc. And then uh, I'll note, note something else too. This goes for categories as well, but uh, especially with the tags, uh, you might have a question about uh, capitalization. My recommendation is just to be consistent in your capitalization. So if you always capitalize the first letter of every word, do it that way all the time uh, because as far as WordPress is concerned, conditioning with a capital C is a different tag than conditioning with a lowercase c. So you want to make sure that you're doing it the same way every time. You can do all lowercase, which is how a lot of people do it, or you can do all, um, not uppercase, but all capitalized. You could do it all uppercase, but I just wouldn't recommend it. Uh, because in the web, uppercase means you're shouting. So we have this list of keywords we put in here. We hit add, and you can see all of the different keywords. Uh, these are tags. Uh, and then we'd hit publish, or now that I have enough in here, I'll go ahead and hit publish and show you what it looks like. Uh, I don't usually hit publish until I put in the category because, like I said, it'll check uncategorized. Uh, and then you uh, you can see that from then on, every time you go to edit this post or you're making changes to it, then instead of publish it as update. So that covers 
this video. Thanks.